السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد الرسول الله حي على الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء وأطهر المرسلين شفيع المذنبين وحبيب رب العالمين محمد صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن محمدا صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم In the name of Allah the compassionate the most merciful All praises due to Allah and may his peace and blessings be upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم We bear witness that no one is worthy of worship but Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is indeed his final messenger. The best of speech is the book of Allah. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who listen to the best of speech, the book of Allah, and follow its commandments. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who come to know the best of ways, the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make us amongst his followers. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ameen. Ya Ahbaba Rasulillahi salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. Nadara Abu Bakr al Siddiq ila al-Nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faraa anna sha'arahu qad ishta'ala shayba. Faqala ya Rasulallah, shaybun ala ra'asik. 
So that one time the Prophet, peace be upon him, sitting with his companion Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq made an observation and shared it with the Prophet, peace be upon him. He said, Prophet of Allah, I see that you're a young man, Prophet of Allah, but I see gray hair in your head. What is going on? And sometimes friends tend to do this. And the Prophet ﷺ was so approachable that people would actually point out these things and they would share it with him. And the Prophet ﷺ answered Abu Bakr back and said, شَيَّبَتْنِي هُودٌ وَأَخَوَاتُهَا He said, Abu Bakr, what has really caused my hair to go gray is Hud, Surah Hud, Surah number 12 in the Quran, and those that are like it. So now I'm saying, what is it about that surah that the Prophet ﷺ said the surah just made my hair go gray? And this surah is actually similar to other places in the Quran. The surah is full of stories, one story after another, one story after another. So Shaykh Muhammad al-Ghazali made the observation and he said, it's not really the stories, but it is, if you look into the ending of the surah, he said you might get a glimpse of why that is. A long instructions to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and to the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the Prophet, peace be upon him, and says, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ طَرَفَيِ النَّهَارِ وَزُلَفًا مِّنَ اللَّيْلِ إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَى لِلذَّاكِرِينَ Be constant in your prayer, daytime and night time, or at the beginning of the day, the end of the day, and parts of the night, and then إِنَّ الْحَسَنَاتِ يُذْهِبْنَ السَّيِّئَاتِ Indeed, good deeds, they drive away bad deeds. ذَلِكَ ذِكْرَى لِلذَّاكِرِينَ this is a reminder for those who are conscious of God. Wasbir, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And be patient, for indeed Allah will not let go the patience of those who have been patient, go in vain or perish without any reward. And then the Qur'an makes an appeal. And then the Qur'an makes an appeal. Inshallah, hopefully you'll be able to hear me. Not the best of days to lose out our electricity. But, and then the Quran makes an appeal. <coughs> and in the appeal, the Quran says, فَلَوْلَا كَانَ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ أُلُو بَقِيَّةٍ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْفَسَادِ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا مِمَّنْ أَنْجَيْنَا مِنْهُمْ And it said, فَلَوْلَا كَانَ مِنَ الْقُرُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ أُلُو بَقِيَّةٍ يَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْفَسَادِ فِي الْأَرْضِ the Quran is asking, why is it that in generations before you, people who are endowed with good sense, they speak against the spread of corruption on earth. Why were they silent? These people who are endowed with these virtues, with this good sense, the Quran is asking what was wrong with them? That they saw what they saw and they were silenced. <coughs> Except for a few whom we have saved. But the majority, what did they do? So however, the majority of them, they went after an easy life full of pleasure, acting insolently towards other people, and they were lost in their sins. That is the first principle. As it has been said, the world suffers a lot, not because of the violence of bad people, but it suffers a lot because of the silence of the good people. Napoleon once said it. He said, all tyranny needs to gain a foothold is for people of good conscience to remain silent. And the Quran is saying, why are you silent? Why do you see the wrong, yet you don't say anything about it? And the Quran describes these people as ulu baqiyya. People of good judgment, 
people who are well balanced, people who've got virtues, they know what is going on. So the Quran is imploring them, why were you silent? And the Quran praises the few who spoke up. That is the first principle. Then moving on, the Quran puts another principle and says, وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَى بِظُلْمٍ وَأَهْلُهَا مُسْلِحُونَ إخواني من أعجب الأشياء تعليق الفخر الرازي على هذه الآية قال وما كان ربك ليهلك القرى بظلم قال ظلم هنا معناة الشرك الشرك ليس مدعاة أو سببا لأن يهلك الله أهل القرى صلوا على رسول الله so then the Quran says وما كان ربك ليهلك القرى and your lord would never destroy a locality. Your Lord would never destroy a community for the mere fact that they chose not to believe. Allah will not destroy people because they chose to hold erroneous beliefs. That is not how it operates. But then the Quran says, so long, so long that وَأَهْلُهَا مُصْلِحُونَ That people in it are trying to right the wrong that took place for whatever reason brothers and sisters we human beings we love stories we like to tell stories and we like to be told stories in fact there is an agreement amongst people the agreement has never been verbalized but once a person says i have a story Everybody listens and everybody is silent. Even though nobody said, be quiet, I have a story. The announcement that I have a story makes it that verbal agreement or non-verbal agreement comes into play and everybody is now listening to what is, to what is going on. So Surah Hud is a list of stories, one story after another. But then the stories are not just for the sake of entertainment, and the Quran brings about these kind of stories. Sadly, sometimes bad stories, negative stories, have the ability to travel a lot more than good stories. And there are times, brothers and sisters, we need to be aware of the wrong that is taking place, but we also should not be missing out on the good that is taking place. Let me be clearer here. After the mass murders that took place in San Bernardino. And it was said that the perpetrators are Muslims, unfortunately. Remember, for the victims it really doesn't matter what religion that person believed in. But sadly, the end result is my loved ones are dead or they are injured. However, in our case, in addition to that, the perpetrator happens to be one who claims to be one of us. And as a result, you know, we've been talking about what's going on with the Muslims. What is going on with people and the way that they're reacting to Muslims. Sisters walking with their hijab, you know, with the Islamic dress are being harassed by people. Our khatib last week, Brother Ahmed Subah, Dr. Subah, his wife was watching her car when somebody came and he spoke and spoke and got closer and closer. And then he decided that he took a knife out. And that's very scary. It's very serious. And we have a tendency that these are the stories that we dwell in. These are the stories that we tell. These are serious consequences for something like this taking place. But there is also something good, very good that is taking place that we need to be aware of. And again, let me be very clear with you. I tell you, Wallahi, we have said this before. And I repeat it, Wallahi, with full confidence. The people out there, the majority of people out there, wallahi, are very decent people. Most Americans are decent people. So decent, what happens is unfortunately, between ISIS on one extreme, and people like Donald Trump on the other extreme, there are millions, millions of people, are really not ISIS, and millions of people are really not Trump. And what needs to happen is what the Quran said. You see the wrong, why don't you speak against that? Because 
illa qalila mimman anjayna min that these people who are endowed with these qualities, Allah is talking to them. Do something. Speak. Do something. So I'm going to share with you some examples of what people have done and we celebrate the behavior of these people. We may not know everything about them, but man, that behavior of yours was a really, really beautiful behavior. Michael Moore. He goes to one of these buildings that are owned by Donald Trump and he's holding a sign. What does his sign read? We are all Muslims. Now we know for a fact Michael Moore is not a Muslim. But he goes there and he's holding the sign and it says we are all Muslims. Michael Moore, what are you talking about? He said we are all Muslims, we are all blacks, we are all Latinos, we are all everybody who is oppressed said we are we are one human family. Says, you do this to the Muslims, guess what? You will do it to somebody else next. <coughs> so me standing up for the Muslims, eventually I am also standing up for myself. That is beautiful, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, that is beautiful. And when somebody has that status and is able to go out there and say, man, what really makes America beautiful is the fact that we are diverse, and that nobody is supposed to be guilty merely by association. That is not good enough. You see this. Sisters tell me, we were at the restaurant, and we are eating, said the table next to us, is a group of young people. And they start speaking loudly, making sure that we hear what is going on. And they're saying negative things about Muslims, terrorism, and how they don't trust us, and how they're afraid of us, said so we became very, very uncomfortable. Said, alhamdulillah, they left. And then when we went to pay the bill, the waiter said, somebody paid the bill, and they left a note. What does the note say? It says, I really do not approve of the jerks that were sitting next to you. They don't represent us. And said that, I am paying for the bill, in hopes that I say it that way. Man, that is beautiful. That is incredible. That people are so decent that this is what they do. Brother tells me, my wife and I went to the restaurant. My wife is wearing the hijab. So she is visibly Muslim. She sits there and we're sitting there and we eat. And at the end of it, the waiter comes back, say, ask for the bill said sorry sir your bill has been paid by somebody who commented and said it must be very difficult to be a muslim nowadays i just want you to know that i support you man that is incredibly beautiful wallahi we live amongst people who are really really decent brothers and sisters and you know what subhanallah the prophet وسلم, is not afraid of appreciation decency wherever and regardless of where it comes from in the hadith, it's a long hadith. al Mustawrid al-Qurashi, he was once talking, he said, the Prophet وسلم, made a comment about how numerous the Romans are going to be. And when the Arabs used the word Romans, they're really talking about Europeans, white people, mainly Christians. So Amr ibn al-As comments on this, and he said, لا أستعجب. He said, it doesn't surprise me. فإن فيهم أربع خصال. He said, indeed, these people have got four traits, four qualities about them. So what is it? He said, إِنَّهُمْ لَأَحْلَمُ النَّاسِ عِنْدَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَأَسْرَعُهُمْ إِفَاقَ بَعْدَ مُصِيبَةِ وَأَوْشَكُهُمْ كَرَّةِ بَعْدَ فَرَّةِ وَخَيْرُهُمْ لِمِسْكِينٍ وَيَتِيمٍ وَضَعِيفٍ وَخَامِسَ حَسَنَةٌ جَمِيلًا وَأَمْنَعُهُمْ مِنْ ظُلْمِ الْحُكَّامِ صلوا على رسول الله. He said, I know these people. He said that there are four qualities about them. Well, what is it? What is it? What have been your observations about these people? He said, they have the patience, sublimity, halim. Said, wa innahum la ahlamun nasi inda fitna. He said these people are patience to undergo a trial and immediately restore themselves to sanity afterwards. Halim is a person who is not easily angered. 
Halim is a person who does not, who is not swift in punishing prior to them, you know, figuring out what has just took place. So what happens is that as soon as it is being said that the perpetrators are Muslims, many voices went out there and what do they start saying? Please make sure that not all Muslims are bad people. These are just bad apples. Man, it takes somebody with an incredible sense of decency to have these statements be amongst the first statements that are made. And then said, وَأَسْرَعُهُمْ إِفَاقَ بَعْدَ مُصِيبَةً Said these people have the ability to restore themselves and get together after a calamity has taken place. Well, I listen to these qualities and these characteristics. And by the way, this hadith is collected by Imam Muslim. You listen to this and you say, that is incredible. It's as if the Prophet ﷺ or Amr ibn Az is talking about the people who are around us nowadays. And then he said, وَأَوْشَقُهُمْ كَرَّ بَعْدَ فَرَّ He said, and these people, he said, that are able to, after trouble, he said that they are able to get up again. كَرَّ بَعْدَ فَرَّ You lose, you fail, you get up again. And then he said, this is a beautiful one, he said, and he said, they are good to the destitute and the orphans, to the weak. And then he said, fifthly, and he said, this is حَسَنَةٌ جَمِيلَةٌ and said this is such a good quality in them that they resist against the oppression of kings. We are very fortunate to have these people as our neighbors, brothers and sisters. However, we must capitalize on their decency. You cannot just count on that and bank on it all the time. People eventually, they get tired, say look, I will come out, I will defend you, I will speak for you, I will do that. But, you know, it's just interesting that some of these questions are very difficult. We agree, not all Muslims are terrorists. But why is it so far most terrorists are Muslims? We agree that these are Muslims who are misinterpreting their books. But why is it only Muslims are misinterpreting their books? Why are other people not doing that? How come nobody is doing this? And part of it, my brothers and sisters, is because we have refused. We have literally changed our deen into history. What has been historically said is what we have been repeating. We try not to do this, at least in this message. We try to understand Islam for what it is, not necessarily for how it was understood hundreds of years ago. The Quran is an organic book, meaning that every generation reads the book and understands the books by the givens and the context of their time, not historically how the book has been understood. That is not the word of God at that point. At that point, we are, for the sake of historical consistency, we are not really reading the book. I have a challenge for us, brothers and sisters. Wallahi, dare to use your brain. Dare to use your brain. It is godly. It is Islamic. It is highly recommended. The Quran speaks to people who have intelligence. Subhanallah. Two things that the Quran does. The Quran will not tell you anything that does not make sense. The Quran will not tell you anything that goes against our own nature as saying human beings. The Quran makes sure that it addresses both. And that is why it is called a mawiva, a book that speaks to the mind and simultaneously appears to the heart as well. Once you do this, then what you have is truly a mawiva. And that's what we need to be looking at. Appreciate the people of decency who are standing up. Wallahi, we must appreciate them. Send a note. Send a note. Send an email. But we've got to appreciate the people who are doing what the Quran has said. Ulubaqiyya. These are the people that we want to celebrate. The Trumps and the ISIS are very loud, despite the fact that they are very, very few, but they're very sensational. 
They make all kinds of statements and they get the attention. However, we do not want to focus and have our energy consumed by them. What we want to do is to say, there is a lot of good that is taking place out there. Lots and lots of good. Have you seen the choir, the children choir in Canada? The Syrian refugees, they come. And you know, many people are saying, oh, Syrian refugees, they can be potential terrorists, and they can be this, and they can be that. And these concerns are valid. But is everybody going to be like this? So the Canadian choir, young children, beautiful scene. They get together, and they're welcoming the Syrian refugees, especially the young ones. How do they welcome them? The entire choir memorizes the most popular Muslim song. You've got white, young Canadian boys and girls, and what are they singing? Tala al Badru alayna. Man, I look into this and I'm saying, Wallahi, we are so blessed that these are our neighbors. In the hadith, the Prophet says, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min jari su. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from having bad neighbors. Bad neighbors are bad, man. My children, husbands, wives, my family, I leave them. And who is the person who is closest to them? My neighbors. So somebody said, Prophet of Allah, please, define. Woman Jarusu, who is this bad neighbor? Then what does Muhammad Wasallam say? You always think that bad neighbors are people who cook bad smelling food and they bother you. They're noisy, they take away your parking space and... That's an element of not good neighborhood practices. But what does Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? قال من إذا رأى حسنة كتبها وإذا رأى سيئة نشرها صلوا على رسول الله He said bad neighborhood are the type of neighbors. When they see good, they keep silent. Meaning when they see their neighbors do good, they're very silent. They don't say anything. However, God helps that neighbor when they falter once. When they once take away their parking space, and then they start talking about how evil and bad their neighbors are. The Prophet ﷺ said, man, these are bad neighbors. These are bad neighbors who are only consumed by observing the evil, the bad that takes place. And once that happens, they go around and they publicize it. He said, we do not want to be these kind of neighbors. Only we get together to share bad news. Man, that is not the type of behavior that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would want from us. What we want to do is, we're very concerned about what is going on. But let me tell you, man, we are pleased by a lot of good that is taking place. Brothers, I beg you. Wallahi, I beg you. Please make sure that you reach out to the people around you. And let them know where we stand. Do you know the majority of Americans hold positive view of Muslims? Can you believe this? Despite what is going on, somebody is still saying, the majority of people are still saying, man, the majority of Muslims are good. They're just bad few ones and they should not be representing and everybody should not be labeled by them. That is beautiful. And we need to capitalize on this. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على رسوله المصطفى وعلى من بآثار اقتفى. Collectively as a community, need to be doing some of these things to make sure that insha'Allah we, we do make a difference. So alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, I would say that you know, we're being reaching out to the people in a meaningful way. Remember, two things are required. We need to reach out to people, but we also need to reach out to people in ways that makes cultural sense. You've got to make cultural sense. The idea is not just me condemning violence or me speaking against this or against that. I need to speak in such a way that really makes cultural sense, that the people understand 
where it is that I am coming from. So you've got to keep this in mind. We've got to make cultural sense. What does that mean? I can accept responsibility without assuming guilt. That's an American thing. I know you're not guilty, but at least accept the responsibility. You are going to do a better job in representing your community. Accept the responsibility that we're going to hear more of you rather than hearing more of them. And when you accept the responsibility, you're not assuming guilt. So speak, but speak in a way that makes cultural sense. In marketing, they tell you that one third of the people, they're going to like you immediately. One third of the people is just going to dislike you immediately. One third of the people is going to say, show me, show me. I don't know, but I want to see. I want to see what it is that you are telling me. And like I said, we are around some very, very good people and we need to capitalize on this. So please, inshallah, if you are able to join us, we have got several programs that we like to be part of. December 20th along with St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Riverside, we are feeding the homeless on three different times, 3, 4, and 5 p.m. If you are available to help, please do join us. We get many requests. Can somebody attend this meeting? Can somebody attend that meeting? And man, this is not a one-man job. If this is something that you like to be part of, interfaith councils are looking for Muslims. They call the message and say, well, we're committed to this meeting, we're committed to that meeting. If you are that person, a brother or a sister, please, please do go to the office and say, where I live, I really like to commit to that interfaith council next to where I am. I would like to do this. Also, inshallah, we are holding a blood drive. And that is taking place on Sunday, January 31st. Please register at the Red Cross under OCIF. And again, remember, these are the things where you make very, very loud statements without saying a word. Blood dries. Do you know what percentage of the people in the U.S. donate blood? 2%. That is the number of the people in the U.S. who donate blood. Do you know what is the percentage of people who donate blood in Orange County? It's less than 0%. Orange County gets their blood from outside the county. Not even enough people within the county do donate blood. So inshallah, please make sure that you will be doing that. And also again, again with Temple Bethel, we'll be serving lunch or Christmas Day between 11.30 and 1 p.m. at the Orange County Rescue Mission in Dustin. Let me tell you something about this. So we said, we really like to help. We in the Muslim community, we would love for us to be seen, you know, other than terrorists, but we really want to be seen as doing something good. Then we said, but you know what? Some members in our community may be a bit sensitive about the idea of, we understand it's Christmas day and we understand that you have got your own menu, but would it be possible that, can we have menus that are Islamically acceptable? What do you mean? He says, you know, some members of our community, they really want to come and serve, but this idea of serving pork is really not something that our community would be happy with. Say, you know what? Don't worry about that. We will make sure on that day, when the Muslims are coming to help, the menu will be Islamically acceptable. Can you imagine that people are just willing to accommodate? What do they want? Come and join. And all that stuff, that is easily taken care of. What we ask for is, we just want you to come and we will be able to accommodate you to the best of our abilities. So please, inshallah, these two activities, please make sure that inshallah you, you can be part of. And of course, inshallah, tonight we do have our youth group after Maghrib. Please, inshallah, after Isha, I'm sorry. Please, inshallah, do, um, do join us. Keep the following people in your dua, uh, Al Hajj, uh, Ayrud. Uh, Sayyah Ayrud, who passed away in Damascus, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless his soul, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Condolences will be accepted here at OCIF um, at 5 p.m. Sunday, the 20th. And also, please keep in your prayers, Brother Salim Khan, who has cancer, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him speedy recovery, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And Sister Nurzia Arif, 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her a speedy recovery. Ya Rabbil Alameen. اللهم يا رب إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعف عنا اللهم فرج هم المحمومين ونفس كرب المحمودين واقض الدين عن المدينين اللهم ارحم موتانا واشف مرضانا وفك إسرانا وعاف مبتلانا واختم الباقيات الصالحات آجالنا ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي عظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأكبر السلام